I'm not guessing or I'm not predicting. I know as a fact that many car design studios are looking for ways to implement AI to their own car design workflows. And how do I know that? Because I talk with many designers from many different studios. Actually, as I'm a brand ambassador of Viscom AI, I got invited from very important car design studios to give a demo to see how it works and how can they implement it to solve their own problems for car design process. So listen, here is an idea. What if you create a portfolio to show how to use AI in car design process? Professional designers don't have time often to invest into learning new tools and follow what's happening in the technology world, AI world, because it's developing so fast and they don't have chance to maybe sit and try all the new features and so on. But sometimes they see on Instagram or on my YouTube videos like how it works and what is possible with AI. So there's always this interest, there's huge interest and curiosity towards AI. And they get a lot of portfolios from students for internships or for job positions, right? So I'm thinking, imagine they're going through the portfolio and seeing that, oh, this guy or this girl does a good job with AI, which already creates this spark of curious, like, how did he even do that? So don't you think it's a big advantage for being hired? I think it is, but let's be clear. I'm not talking about generating tons of mid-journey images and put them in a PDF and say it's a portfolio. I'm talking about that you already know what is a portfolio. You know how to make a project. You know how to sketch. You know how to 3D model, do the renders, develop the idea from a sketch to the end result. But now implementing AI to this workflow because that's what they are looking for. Of course, also the tools, they want to learn the tools like how Midjourney works, how Viscom works and so on, but not in a random scenario. As I said, I talk with different designers from different companies and they have unique problems or unique approach to AI. Some of them want to really use it from sketch to render. Some of them want to create alternatives of their already existing renders. Some of them want to use their own style into the new sketches and so on. Thankfully, Viscom does it all, by the way. <laughs> But the overall idea is they are not looking for randomly how to prompt and generate an image. They are looking for ways to improve their workflow. I think you got this idea, right? So imagine you train yourself because as a student you have more time and you are younger probably and you are open to do more mistakes, you are more creative, you are open to new possibilities, right? That's how it should be. You need to be more brave and imagine learning these new tools and giving them a chance to learn directly from you. Because trust me, if you are someone who think that oh, I can just do a couple of AI images and that's like I can cheat the car design studios, that's, that will never happen. <laughs> Experienced designers know in a half second an image if it's like a very poorly AI generated car design or if there's a thought process behind. So this video is not to tell you to underestimate the other skills. You still need to build sketching skills like the understanding the proportions, finding the ideas and so on but making it in a more efficient way will be, I think, a big advantage for your portfolio. So if it was me, I would do it this way. I would make a couple of sketches. First, you need a brief, right, for your project. I don't know if it's your school project or personal project. I'm more into personal projects because in the school, all the other students will do the similar project and to differentiate yourself, I think it's good to show your own personality on the portfolio. So for example, in my case, I did a mini project, a Volvo project, like these were the brands that I would like to work when I was a student and many more, it was changing every month, but let's not get into this. So if it was me now, I would get the brief. Let's say we're gonna make um, Aston Martin because I saw here on the video that I had the Valkyrie. It's a super cool car. So let's say I'm doing an Aston Martin project. What is it? Supercar, hypercar, or maybe let's go a little bit different direction. I wanna make a sports car more like in the Cayman version of an Aston Martin, more like possible to use daily drive, but still a beast. This is my brief. So I would first do my research, check what is Aston Martin identity and so on. And then I would get a package idea. Let's say I'm gonna use like a Cayman like package. And then I would start sketching this. I would do multiple sketches as I would do on a regular project. But in the meantime, at some point, maybe on mid journey, I would generate some images. I would generate, let's say 200, 300 images, and then I would pick 10 best out of them. And these images I would use maybe like a inspiration image. I would put them like a, imagine 10 sketches and one of the images on the corner, like an inspiration. So this shows that yes, I'm able to generate images with AI, but also I'm able to sketch and make a relationship between them. And then after I pick my key sketch, key idea, I would put this into Viscom and I would develop the idea further there. Because Viscom is not anymore just from sketch to render tool. 
It also supports a lot your creativity and you have a lot of control there. So I would put those sketches into Visco, maybe generate a 3D, see the sketch from different angles, render on top of them, and I would somehow show them on my portfolio. Okay, that's the tricky part, right? Like what is somehow? I would always show that the main thing is my idea and the design, but in between in a short way, not like showing the whole your um, the workbench full screen shot that nothing is visible, but showing like 10 variations of the same sketch and writing there like I did with Viscom alternatives of my design. And then you pick one of them and then you develop further. And you can show that how did you develop further with Viscom. You can say that this was my input sketch, I rendered it with Viscom, then I changed this and that manually and then I refined it further. It's kind of like a tutorial almost that's showing in your portfolio, but more like it shows also how you think on the design process. So it's like, I don't know, it, it, it makes sense in Turkish, but I don't know if in English, like with one stone, you kill two birds. I'm not into killing any animals, but you know, the point is like with one portfolio, you show both that you can add value to them by showing them AI. And you can also add value as a designer because you show your thinking process. So that's what I would do. And then I would finalize my design. If it's a sketch project, I would keep it as it is. Finalize with Viscom and some Photoshop and say that that's how it happened. Or if it's a bigger project on your portfolio, you can definitely 3D model this idea and finalize and show renders as well. And trust me, when a professional designer sees that portfolio, they will be like, oh, okay, this person gets it. It's not just writing a prompt and getting an AI. It's just not a shiny other image, but it's a part of the process. And that's what they are looking for. So the next question you might have in mind, if you're new to the channel, probably you're asking, okay, but which AI tool to use? But if you follow me for a while, you know that I'm gonna say Viscom because I'm a brand ambassador, but I'm a proud brand ambassador. It's not a coincidence. I believe in that tool. I talk with designers, they already tried Viscom and there are conversations happening with big brands, how to add Viscom to their toolbox. And some big brands already have Viscom there and actively using. So why Viscom? Actually, let me tell you something more fun. Some studios, car design studios are trying to build, let's not say trying, they build their own AI tools, but it cannot compete with Viscom because Viscom is focused on this. They have investments, they have big team to develop this tool further. Their job is to develop design tool for designers. So in a design studio, when they are trying to inbuild themselves based on different platforms, it just cannot compete with a big tool like Viscom. And if you're a student, probably you have an email account through the school, which finish with .edu. With this email account, you can sign into Viscom and use it for free through the education program. Another very important thing that I have to mention is, of course, not all the studios in the world or all the designers in the world sharing this mindset. Some of them are still against AI, which I don't understand why, but I believe personally that they will also change in a couple of years. I believe that all the studios will use AI. From my experience, from my conversations with other professionals, what I can tell you is there are more studios who are interested in learning AI tools and implementing it to their workflow than the ones who are against it. And in this video, I show you real time how I use Viscom recently for a sketch project that I'm gonna use later for Blender. You can see the details in the video. It's a real time, kind of like a tutorial workflow process. So see you in that video.